What does OLED even stand for? Organic? Gross. <laughs> So today's episode is kind of a rabbit hole that I tumbled down through. It started off with Kotaku doing a couple of interesting back-to-back -back articles last week, starting with Sony charging devs at least $25,000 for PlayStation Store visibility. And then the day after, due to uh, public tweets and private interviews, PlayStation is hard to work with, devs say. So it felt like we were getting some real juicy, dirty laundry, the kind that normally stays super secret. If we're being honest, the developers found some interesting ways to work around their NDAs to kind of spill some beans. And uh, I guess tea, I guess you don't spill beans anymore. But what was made clear throughout all of this and something I need, yeah, I need to make clear is that we're talking more about indie developers, smaller indie developers, are disproportionately mistreated in comparison to Sony's contemporaries, Sony's competition, Nintendo and Microsoft. Uh, Sony is just seems spiteful almost in how poorly they treat smaller teams. It, it's things like having to report numbers back to Sony manually through dumb methods to, to not being able to control when and how much your games go on sale for, uh, but really, the craziest stuff is a couple of developers straight up showing us pie charts saying, look, here's how much less money we're making on this giant platform. And that's the problem. A weird thing, though, that stuck out to me is that one of these articles insists uh, through one of the anonymous developers, but also the author, that it is somehow impossible to find the newest games uploaded to the PlayStation Store. Weird to me because that's something I do out of curiosity on a weekly basis. Uh, the, in the article itself, it says, as if it weren't already difficult enough to find, when you find a way to sort by new release dates, it's filled with unreleased games. So here's the PlayStation Store. Yeah, if you click on latest, you're not really seeing the latest games. You're seeing the games that most likely ponied up the $25,000 or more, probably much, much more. The way to actually see the newest games is this. Go to browse, sort by, release date, new to old. I'm not saying it's the simplest path, but it's there. It exists. That's what should be in the article. Uh, but this is also where things went off track. I got distracted. What is this? So if you are a frequent release date sorter like myself, you might be familiar with a studio that at this point releases a new game every Sunday morning. Uh, the studio is called Breakthrough Games. Each of these games so far has this weird monochromatic style. It's like, it's like first gen Atari. Old, old looking games, super simple. I mean, look, you're seeing the games as they are. And then for each of these games, the third screenshot will always explain the game's lesson. For instance, here's the lesson of space. In this arcade game, when you defeat the right enemy, you get 10 points. If you defeat the wrong enemy, it's game over. It's a battle to win over evil, no matter what you believe. We can all agree that there's both good and evil in the world. And many would agree that there's an unseen world of good and evil spirits fighting for control. So how do you win in the battle against evil? Make sure you're being good to yourself and respectful and kind to everyone, no matter who they are. And if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit to help and lead you. Yes, you can win the battle against evil. Check out more about all this in Ephesians chapter 6 in the Bible. And that's generally what the message will be, something generally positive with a little something extra if you do happen to be Christian. Um, and so I figure that's kind of what this is. You know, they're always 99 cents. And so I figure there's probably just some company that is not making money off of these uploads, but figures there's youth on this platform. It's a good way to reach out to them. But then, Sunday... July 4th, we have these games uploaded. Project Summer Ice Bowling Story 1 Jane version and Project Summer Ice Bowling Story 1 Pammy version. As you can see, the budget has increased significantly. What happened here? What changed? What changed in you? Breakthrough? 
It's that's the kind of thing. This is the kind because I thought I understood it. I thought I had a, an understanding of what was happening here. I thought I had the pattern, and then this shows up, and this is a problem for me. Because it's like, what is, do, are there still messages? You check the screenshots. What is, what, is that the bowling? But also, yes, okay, we still have a biblical message to this, but it also seems like a, like a dating bowling game. And you see what I saw, this is, this is something. This was either Doki Toki Literature Club, you know, something where there's something beneath the surface, or pure weirdness. And I do want to make it clear at this moment, I don't, I'm not making fun of Christians for being Christian. That's not, that's soft. That's not what this is. This is this whole other level of PlayStation Store weirdness that felt undiscovered. This felt like a, a whirlpool and I'm sucked in. I'm not even trying to swim against it. I'm swimming straight to the middle of it. I knew it at this point. Oh no. This is delayed input this week. So I played Jane version first and it started off it's kind of, I, kind of serious, I thought. I thought maybe, oh no, this might be a serious game. Pammy shows up. She says, let's go bowling. And we do. We go bowling and it's this. This is the game. This is, it's not even, in, there's not even an alley. You can't even get a gutter ball. You can get a gutter ball if you know the trick. You can do, you can do that. But honestly, I don't think, I don't think you can even get a strike. I think this is a bowling game in which there's no strikes. But anyway, we, we bowl for some rounds. The scores absolutely don't matter. And the two girls finally have a chance to talk to each other, Jamie and Pammy. So Jane says, hey, I'm having problems with this boy at school. And again, I'm like, oh no, is this, is this serious? She says, no, he's not a creep. He's not, a, don't worry, he's not creepy. He's just staring at me extra. And then this is where Pammy says, oh, is he, he probably has a crush on you. And Jane's like, oh my God, I don't, what, what do I, what do I do? If, I don't even know what to do. I've never had a boy have a crush on me before. And then that boy, that very boy, shows up at the bowling alley. Mark. And Jane's like, oh, I, there he is. Should I, should I go talk to him? And this is where the bullshit starts. Because Pammy says, no. Pammy says, you should make him come to you. Pammy, Pammy literally says, the beginning of a good relationship is letting the guy decide for himself who he wants to date. If a guy is committed at the beginning, I think it'll work out better in the long run too. And Jane says, wow, that's pretty deep thinking, Pammy. And I'm thinking that cannot be the lesson. This has to be the, the pre-lesson that they get wrong. Anyway, there's more bowling. Jane gets an opportunity to talk to Mark and it's a good conversation. It goes well, it goes smoothly. Nothing really suggestive happens. They're just like, I'm gonna keep bowling here. Are you gonna keep bowling here? I think I'm gonna keep bowling here. Okay, so that conversation ends. Jane goes back to Pammy and says, hey, I think it went pretty well. Do you, could we like come back here more? And Pammy's like, Jane, yeah, but just as long as you also are here for the bowling. And Jane's like, yeah, I totally am. End of the day, Jane goes home and then starts to wonder, what if Mark doesn't actually like me? That's the cliffhanger. Please buy and download chapter two. No message. No message. How is this a breakthrough game? So after getting the platinum, I started Pammy version. Pammy version is nearly identical. It's nearly the, the exact same game. Pammy version has all the same conversations except for the parts where Pammy wasn't around. So the whole conversation with Mark, you kind of see Pammy just stare in the distance. It is so weird. It is 90% the same game, which is by the way, 15 minutes long. Anyway, when Pammy gets home, she meets her sister. Oh, what was her sister's name? Rue. So Pammy's talking to Rue about what happened. And Rue is like, Pammy, why do, you, why do you want Jane to have a date so bad? And then Pammy finally cites the Bible. And then in addition to that, says, if I help Jane, maybe God will bless me and a guy will ask me out too. And that's, that's our cliffhanger there. Will God bless Pammy with a boyfriend. Please, 
purchase and download chapter two. And I know at this point, it seems like I'm mocking something that a well-meaning 14-year-old wrote. Because I thought, I thought that was maybe what was happening at that point too. I, I'm on the same boat. I was like, this has to be, this has to be just like a, maybe a sweet, well-meaning 14-year-old boy. Uh, the weird thing is, the only name I see attached to anything from any of these students, there's no credits. The only thing I see attached to any of this is Myron Kevin Tynes Jr. And apparently he founded the company in 1999. That's no 14 year old boy anymore. So this wasn't, this wasn't an organization, you know, letting some kids program some games and putting them on, on the store. This is one human being devoted to this, uploading a new game every Sunday morning to the PlayStation store. And so to try to find a point here, to get to a broader point, I do think this does illustrate when this is hard to say, right? Because you want, you always want to be on the Indies side. You always want to be on the side of the Indies when it comes down to like, Sony, treat the Indies better. Some games are not worth the resources, right? You can see that. You can see some games probably shouldn't be uploaded to the PlayStation Store. Not every game can get the spotlight, and so selections do have to happen. So here's a good part from Kotaku's article, PlayStation is hard to work with Dev Say. The information about just how much worse it is for indies to work with Sony than Microsoft or Nintendo keeps piling in. Oh yeah. There's Nintendo who supports you, once such response begins, then Microsoft who supports you, and then there is Sony, who supports its own AAA machine and gives a fuck about everyone else. So obviously that's an exaggeration. Because, I mean, there is there is more than just Sony's AAA machine on their platform. They do promote more. But I mean, even if you go to the indie section of the PlayStation Store, what you see here is kind of a bunch of cool kids, kind of a bunch of all-stars already. Most of them were anonymous, but I get the impression that the people Kotaku interviewed for their article are not in that PlayStation Indie section, not in that exclusive cool club, right? And uh, probably not making PlayStation as much money. And that's really where this becomes a thing, right? Is that when we say to Sony, hey, care more about smaller Indies, we're asking them to invest in something that makes less money for them. I think where you kind of have to take the hit is you kind of not only have to see this as an investment that someday these smaller crews may someday make the next fogs, but also just a perception thing. Honestly, really just, just a, a thing of like, it seems at this point you're being mean to developers and it's just a bad look. And yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all easy stuff to say as a non-billionaire. You know, you don't become a billion dollar corporation being nice to lemonade stands. It's, I just do, I do feel that maybe you could say to Sony, just probably at the bare minimum, match the effort of Nintendo. That's all I strive for. If I'm hitting Nintendo effort, that's a good day. That is it for delayed input this week. I'll be back next Thursday. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. I regret to inform you here, and maybe I feel more comfortable telling you because it's after the credits, that I did not stop tumbling down this rabbit hole at the end of Pammy's Bowling Adventure, Chapter 1. Uh, there is a website for Project Summer Ice, uh, which you need to see here. Um, you see play video games up top. Beneath that is watch anime and other videos. So obviously you got to click this. But this is, it's weird. These are YouTube videos with no voice acting. It's basically just extra, Fred Smith, Fred, Smith, stop it. Fred I can't show this. It's basically just like extra cut scenes for the games. We did learn that Pammy goes to college though. Honestly, I couldn't, 
watch it. Not, I'm not like being too cool and like I totally watched all of these. These are too awkward for me to even watch. But there is something else here that I'm sure keen-eyed viewers have already noticed as well. Relationship advice. Now this is a general Q&A here until we scroll down. Here's the, rom the, the romantic relationships real life Q&A. Um, unfortunately, some of these options are not in yet, so we do not yet know how to break up with a girl. Uh, this is my favorite piece though. How do you ask a girl on a date part two? Hey, I'm Yet from the Project Summer Ice series. Today's blog, how to ask a girl out on a date. This is a pretty big topic, so we won't cover everything in one blog post. We'll take things one step at a time. The girl you want to ask out. Do you know what her hobbies or interests are? You may want to buy her something related to those hobbies or interests. It could be a great lead-in to asking her out. That's it for now. Thanks for reading. And you can find my other adventures in the Project Summer Ice series. And that's all Yet has for us. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you're just gonna, you're just gonna straight up buy her, like, what are you gonna, you're gonna buy her, like, a skis? And then ask her out? I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's worth a shot. But I don't think so yet. Look how confident he is. Like, this guy's got it together? I think he did. Okay, well, hold up. Let's, there is one more. All right, so I feel like you know exactly what this guy thinks about paying for the date. We don't even need to read this comic. Um, but here we go. I don't know how far it'll go with my girlfriend Hannah and I, but I really am serious about her. She's great. So I make sure to show it by doing this one simple thing. Um, how far will Yet and Hannah's relationship go? Find out in the summer Project Ice series. So this is, this is a whole metaverse, dude. This is a whole, and, and it's not popular. The work was, what's the dog? Arf, arf, I'm dog. I'm one of the characters from the Project Summer Ice series. Learn more about me right here. My, well, I'm here already, dog. Oh, bro. Give the dog an age. How hard is, just give the dog an age. <laughs> this fucking dog knows how to say the word food. <laughs> This fucking dog. <laughs>